I do believe it was something to that effect. Uh, well, I will be playing Atlas. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, I suppose I could play Hakan as well. Uh, well, if you wanted to play Hakon, Link, wait, who should I play then? I guess I can play Tish. Yeah. Oh, he's just got an Echo clone in here. Where is the uh, actual Tish? I see Humphrey, Ikrin, Spiritual Weapon, and Tish, Echo Clone. Uh, loading. Uh, okay, I see now. Ugh, we are all level five. We did not level up. Make the G level up yet? Okay. You're responsible. Yeah.
Oh, I get an ability score improvement at this level. Neat. Uh... Unexpected delights. I suppose I will increase my strength by two. Very well, Atlas is ready. Oh, are you uh, leveling a pack on as well? Damn. Um, I just realized Ivar is still uh, fucking level 4. <laughs> um, so I'm going to level him up real quick. He'll take average twice, so that's additional 10 HP. He's hilariously behind on gear, too, but that's fine. We'll just stick with this for now. Five extra attack, level six oath feature. So he is Odin. So now he can summon two spectral direwolves during combat. Nice. Yeah, Hakan is Hakan is Thor. All right, then we're going to get started in a minute here. All right, uh, you enter the desecrated mausoleum, uh, and you see that the cryptea and the uh, unchained that have entered before you are here in full force. They have already engaged uh, the members of the cult that are lying within. Looking down the long central hallway, uh, you can see a large number of unengaged and de undead protecting a necromancer. We must purge these foul beings. Man's got the right idea. 
Yes. What in doubt, I, kill. I suppose I will shout to the Cryptea any forces that have entered with us uh, and direct them towards their various engagements. Oh, that reminds me. Where is... I had a meme I wanted to show you guys. Hold on. I actually have a folder in my D&D hard drive because I have a separate SSD for D&D stuff. Uh, that's just memes for D&D. Let's see. <laughs> yes um so i made a i was doing some leveling uh in wow like a couple weeks ago um and i called somebody a murder hobo and they responded how dare you i'm a proud transient treasure hunter <laughs> and i was like all right i'm gonna screenshot that Did I share the one to you guys about the barbarian picking up the halfling in magical plate armor and using him as a club? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, not that we have small races in this game yet, because I still haven't decided. I'm thinking about maybe making dwarves small, but I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So the party moves up. Ta-da! Yeah, but I gotta make. I need I need a different small race. The problem is is. Like figuring out which ones to do, because like my first thought was do the Fey, the the, Sealy and Unsealy courts, and I'm probably butchering the fuck out of that pronunciation, but the problem is I intend for them to be like actual minor NPC factions eventually. Um, because they're the the Elven Kingdom is primarily based off of um, Great Britain. So there's the Irish, the Scottish, and like maybe the maybe I'll end up doing the Welsh, or I might just have it be the actual like Anglo Saxons, you know, the people who invaded and took over. The British who are mean to everybody type thing. Um, but I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but I was really thinking about doing the the winter and the summer courts um, because then I could have the two factions like sun and moon orcs I'd have winter and summer fey but I haven't decided yet but there's actually there's actually not a huge amount of tiny races in mythology that aren't already like a monstrous race like an like an enemy race so i don't know i'll have to figure that out at any rate um yes let us proceed so i'm going to add to combat and the uh the necromancer is going to see you and oh pixies that's not a bad idea it's a great idea actually um oh, maybe i could do pixies see i didn't even consider them that's a good point mink uh so we are going to roll for und initiative and the zombies with their nat one Good job, zombies. Good start. Okay. Mission. That's a very good start. Okay. Yeah, it is. There goes your nat 20 for the day, though. Yep. And then... Oh, there we go. <laughs> Two what in a row. the shit? All right, so it's three of you, followed by four enemy types, followed by three of you. 
Right on. Ugh. All right. Uh, so we're going to get started. Begin combat. Atlas, go. Okay. Um, well, I should move up very likely. Uh, 30. And as far as this. Um, I will take my action to dash and I will move up an additional uh, 15 feet uh, just so I don't get totally swamped and yeah. that will be it my guy's uh, trying to get stuck in yeah All right, Shauron is going to move up one, two, three, four. Remember, the NPCs to your left and right um, are not actually targets. It's just that token layer isn't a thing yet, so or uh, world layer isn't a thing yet, so they have to show up on the token layer. Um, yeah. And so yes, they are, they are not real. Uh, and then Shauron is going to move up two more. And he is going to shoot at the Necromancer because he knows that man is dangerous. One. Lamau. Nice. All right, somebody roll me a d20. Tell me what it is. Cool, 30. Uh, Mink, I already rolled 220, so you should do this one. Mink? Hello? Yeah, there. Did Mink explode again? Perhaps. I suppose I will. Uh, we initiated combat, and I suggested you roll a d20. Because he crit, a but seven. I got it. Don't worry. So, stabbed. Roll damage dice twice. Um... Two D eight plus four plus one. Lamau. Uh, so the necromancer is dead. <laughs> Good start. All right. Uh, and that's the sort of thing he would have shielded, except it's a nat twenty. So. Um. He's a. Uh... Concentrating on a ritual or something. Right. Uh, so, well, that's going to make it a lot easier for you guys than it was for the Thursday group. I say to two people who are in the Thursday group. Yeah. All right. And he's going to make a second shot at one of the archers. And still hit despite only rolling a four. Um, and damage. And then that's going to do, now it's for his, um, friggin' the hunter's, uh, hunter archer thing, horde breaker. So another shot at the guy next to him. It's a good start. Tish, do you actually have control of Tish? Yes, I should. Okay. Um, I was yeah, say, I'm will... pretty sure I did that, but... 
He will move up. Uh, five, ten, third. Hold on. Math is not math. One second. Thirty. Okay, so he will move up. Right up here. And then. What is the distance on his, like, clone summon? I think it's 60 feet. Uh, in that case, he will summon his clone. Um, which is under... There we go. Um, okay, he will summon his clone. And he still can attack, right? After he summons it? Or is that his action? Uh, he's always done so before. So he's... If he can't, he's been cheating the entire time. Uh, uh, manifest Echo is one, a bonus action. So yes, he can. Um, so he will take two attacks with... Uh, Extra attack. Um, so. One, two. Oh, can't do them both at the same time, I forget. 24. That's definitely a hit. All right. Well, uh, and I'm sure there's some something I'm forgetting here, but that's okay. Um, number two, 17. Also a hit. Uh, seven. Does he have... He's got like re-roll the ones on damage dice or something, doesn't he? Yeah, he has um a great weapon master, so you can re-roll both those ones. Okay. That's better. Uh so seven plus four plus one, so twelve. Bam! Obliterate that zombie. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, um... Seventeen or twenty. How? I can never remember how f the fucking zombie thing works. Let me see. I miss a DC five plus the damage taken. Um, so the killing blue, killing blow was seven plus four plus one. So that's, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve damage plus five is 17 damage. It made a 20, so it is still up with one HP. Okay. Because of undead constitution, which I'm actually going to start using for once. All right, and is that it for Tish? Yes. One, two, three, four, five. All right, these two swordsmen are going to attack you. You actually being Atlas? Uh, sorry, I was reading uh, this thing. Did they happen to run past uh, the clone? Uh, one of them did, yes. 
Uh, he will take his attack of opportunity Do on it. that one. Um, and then if it hit, if it does damage, if it hits, then they are uh, have zero movement speed. So. All right, roll damage. Okay, and then uh, I will attack the first one to the left that enters my attack range with my dory. Good hit. Bam. Okay. Now I am prepared to accept the attacks. How generous of you. And that's going to miss. miss. So... And the other guys are out of range. So, Bone Guard Swordsman. One, each one is going to take one shot at you and one shot at Tish. Against you. Oof. Against Tish. Lamau. Alas, not in melee. No response. Miss. And hit. Minimum damage to Tish. Uh, and that's... Does he... He's got heavy armor. Oh, master, he's got right? heavy armor master, which means it does zero damage. Yep. <laughs> all right. Uh, the three skeleton archers will t all shoot at you. Because they don't have the height advantage of the bone guard to shoot at people behind you. Actually, no. The two that got shot by Sharon are going to shoot at Sharon, and then the one that didn't is going to shoot at you. And that doesn't go well for them. Now for you. Correct. Anything that is not in front of Mephisto is to be ignored. All right, Mephisto, you take seven. Okay. Mink, are you going to sing the song for me if you're frosty? Hawken. Do Hawken things. I shall use the certified Hawken move held up by family. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm picturing a friggin' Dominic Toretto D&D &D character. character. <laughs> family. I should feel bad for saying that, but I don't. Because it's a meme, and it's funny to me. Because you haven't had a long rest. Mm -hmm. 
Spirit Guardians. Nobody's in it yet, so we just ignore it for now. Now it's Kali. Get it, girl. I genuinely don't remember. Yes, it was. Yeah. Skinwalker does Skinwalker things. By the way, just so you guys know, I've started moving this back over to Roll20. Um, because as much as I love Foundry, um, I feel like it's really stressing me out uh, with some of the stuff that's missing. Um, so we might be doing Roll20 Roll twenty in the future. Um, or I might just save doing Roll20 for... Um, like a different test um, right. because I love Foundry I love I don't have to pay a subscription for it but for example like in this case where all the tokens even the ones you guys don't have to fight are on the token layer it's extra hassle in my life I do not need <laughs> where do you want to be Mink here you go whoops sorry I was rotating you because my OCD didn't like that you were facing backwards. Because the whole reason I switched to Foundry in the first place is A, I think it's pretty. Like, just, it's nice. But B, the fact that you get almost all of the stuff like there's stuff it's missing but you get the ability to do stuff like lighting and whatnot just as part of the base purchase because you just buy foundry and then you're done but with roll 20 you have to do a monthly subscription if you want to be able to have lighting or walls and it's like ugh. and i'm not charging you guys to play so yeah <laughs> Yes, it's a bonus action to transform.
Doing the left one. Oh. Lamel. Nice. Well, it's definitely dead, but for the hell of it, let's see how dead it is. Roll me a d20. Yeah, see that right there will kill it, but roll me a d20 just so we can see what uh what you get. A 12, so that would be roll twice as many damage dice as normal. Well, that's not necessary. He's already dead. This bear whose skin is like cracked open and she just smells so bad just goes to town on this random skeleton all right slash the one on the right go for it that's a hit and i can almost guarantee you're gonna kill it i don't think even minimum damage will leave it alive but give it a shot Yep, it's dead. Nice. Good going. Sun Dragon's character. Well, he is going to use... The ravenous ones. And summon. Two spectral dire wolves onto the battlefield. They don't look very spectral, but I promise they are. And... They're going to go charging up. To either side of Frosty, and they will each attack. And now You will fail. Second one. Also fails. Nice. Skeleton halberdiers. All right, the skeleton halberdiers are going to attack the dire wolves. Both of those hit. Second one, or the second pair. Okay, 
So that actually missed. Second one missed. So. Now the zombies. And they're going to attack. Hits. You got this, dire wolves. Come on. Atlas. Wrapping back around. All right. Um, well. Oh. This uh, dire wolf, or this uh, skeleton below the dire wolf is still alive, right? Correct. Okay. So. I shall advance. To here and stab the skeleton. Excellent. And then number two. Very nice. Um, and that shall be it for Atlas. All right, Shauron is going to uh, continue taking pot shots at the archers. First attack. And now the first attacks Horde Breaker. And second attack. And second attacks, Horde Breaker. Okay. Tish. Tish is going to be doing the big work here. He will advance. Uh, here uh, and he will uh, actually scratch that he will move here and attack from his Shadow Clone, Jutsu, uh, the Halberdier. So, number one. Roll damage. Pretty good. And which one is that? The top left or the top right? 
top right. Um, and then we must overload one flank at a time. And then number two. Fourteen? Misses. Okay. And that will be Tish's turn. The sole surviving skeleton swordsman will attack Sharon. Who takes four damage? Oh, the Bone Guard Swordsman. Uh, one is going to attack the Dire Wolf, and the other is going to attack Tish. Dire Wolf first. Misses. Second attack. Hits. Now Tish. Oh wait, that was not on Tish. No, that, the second that, attack that, was that on one. Tish. Yeah, no, the the sorry, I misspoke. So the first two attacks are on the dire wolf, and the second two attacks are on Tish. Okay. Okay, Tish takes six. Three from that, right? And, yep, and he takes... Three again. All right. So like I said, Tish takes six. Yeah. Uh, the skeleton archer surviving will take a shot at Kali. And I think that's a miss. Yep, that's a miss. Hawken. Ah, uh, yes. Um, oh man, moving spell templates. There we go. And I can't remember, does Spiritual Guardians do the damage on your turn or on the creature's turn? Let's see. Okay. All right, what next? That is definitely a hit. Twenty-four. 
12 damage, and that is to zombie at the bottom. Alright. Um, uh, keep it as is for now, I think. Because it only affects bludgeoning weapons, right? Melee attacks that hit an enemy. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, let's keep it as is multiple times per turn. That's fine. Because... Really, the more you can attack in the game, it's it's still going to be like 1d4 damage, so it's actually going to be pretty minimal um, in the late game. That's a hit. Alright. He is still up. All right, now do stuff as Kali. Uh, Shauron's face, but yeah. Tisha's brawling with the Bone Guard Swordsman. Appreciate you rotating the bear. I like it. Hit! Hit. Dead. See, Ivar. Who I forgot to move last turn, so I'm going to say he moved last turn because all I did was have him summon his wells. Is going to move enough to be up here. And he is going to. Cast nothing yet. He's just going to attack. And miss. And he's going to bop. And 
Lamau. <laughs> okay, so that's what bludgeoning. So, uh, splat. Roll the maximum. Deal the maximum possible damage twice. The creature is stunned and roll on major injury. All right, uh, roll me another d20 and tell me what it is. Minx, do you want to roll this d20? Take that as a no. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, let's see. That is Edge of Death. The creature has disadvantage on constitution and death saving throws. Well, that's, I suppose, not immediately relevant. Nonetheless... damage for that ability is d4 so maximum possible is 8 and he is stunned uh, skeleton halberdiers now must make their or two of them must make uh, wisdom throws He's fine. He is not. All right, what's the damage? 3d8. So roll me 3d8, Mink, uh, for radiant damage, and then I'll just have it for the guy who made it. All right, 18. Nine minus eighteen. All right, and let's see. They are going to attack the dire wolf again. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Only one of them succeeded because he got a 20. First one. Second one. Lamau, third one. And fourth one. Also misses. Excellent. Zombies. The zombies in... Well, this guy's going to die no matter what, because he only has one HP. All right. Uh, Mink, roll me damage again. You got this. Big roll. Damage. Okay. 
didn't get the chance to attack because they all dead. This guy is still prone with the direwolf standing on him, so this guy is going to attack. At least, yes. Do something. Okay. Um, oh boy. I want to get over here to help with the bone guard swordsman, but I really think it's probably covered. Um, uh, I suppose I can. Um, okay. The ruler is telling me the Bone Guard Swordsman is within 10 feet of me when I'm here, so given that my Dory has reach, I'm going to go ahead and attack it twice. I don't think that fits. Uh, and then number two. 19? Is hit. Okay. Um, and then he's inflicted with unwavering mark. Oh, and I of course can bonus action. Um, polar master. Which misses wildly. Okay. Oh, that's all right. Um, well, that's it for you? Yep. All right, Sharon is going to move over. He's going to take some shots at the uh, halberdiers. One will hit. And the uh, mirrored attack will hit, so f damage. Tish. Tish will um, attack the Bone Guard Swordsman. Yeah. So. No. 19? Hits. Bam. Um, does he reroll twos on on damage? Yeah, or ones and twos, I think. Yes. Okay. So uh, so add three to so sixteen damage total. Yes, sir. On that one, and then uh, number two. Attack number two, bam. Hits. Uh, that hits, yep. Twelve, and then I will use his... Unleash Incarnation. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, he is stunned, so you have advantage against him. So, uh, roll twice more. Let's crit fish. Okay. Uh, so I'll just roll one more with advantage. How's that sound? That works. Nope. All right. No crits. Okay. So, uh, and then I will use his unleash 
incarnation and make an attack from Frosty on the rightmost Albert ear. Alright. Hits. That's virtually guaranteed to kill. Yeah, That's pretty pretty good damage there, yeah. That would have killed him even at full HP. Nice. And that is it for Tish. The Bone Guard is going to attack Tish twice. And it's at disadvantage because of Mark, correct? Uh, I have to be within five feet. Oh, so okay. no, it's not. Unfortunately. He takes Oof. 12 damage. Oof. Which is nine because of the minus three, so... The bone guard is going to the other bone guard is going to do a DC thirteen wisdom saving throw and fail. Mink roll low. Jeez, he does not have. He's not very wise. He's not. Shitty roll for damage, but uh, it will now attack Mink twice. Which hits. And then the second one also hits. Also does. Damn. Skeleton Archer is going to shoot at the leftmost direwolf. And hit. And Hawken. Attacking the swordsman. Okay. That's a hit. Second, uh, the battle axe attack is a miss. Miss, but don't forget your 1d4 from Son of Thunder. Or 2d2. Yeah. Yes. 
Oh, but remember, he's using the old version. He's using the old. He hasn't updated his sheet in ages because he hasn't played. Um, so let me open up Ragnar's sheet real quick. Uh, so he is at six level. So it is. 1d6 base damage and it's one size bigger so it's a 1d8 so do a 1d6 and a 1d8 minus 11 very nice Uh, the 15 missed, yes. Fair enough. <laughs> Hits. Nice. Kali. <laughs> yes. Well, I have to finish inventing them first. Because I'll be honest, besides the Marrow Hunt Wolves, I had no beasts created for this game yet. It was all just faction NPCs and the cult and that stuff. Like, no, just regular animals. That misses. No, because you rolled advantage, so you actually ro Oh! Yeah, yeah, 15 plus... Yeah, okay, sorry. I thought it was adding the two together. Yep, yep. No, I, th I thought it was 11 plus, f and plus 15, and then I actually did the math and realized that that would not be 24. <laughs> So that hits. Roll damage. Crit. Roll me a d20 and then have Mephisto tell me what it is. Twenty. And what was it? Piercing or slashing? Uh, slashing. Uh, deal the maximum result of damage twice. Roll on major injury and the creature is bleeding. Uh, okay, roll me one more d20 for the major injury. Fifteen. 
Uh, disadvantage on constitution and death saving throws. Well, that's not much help. Um, okay, so... That is... What's the maximum possible damage? Uh, 4d6. So 6, 12... Uh, 18, 24, plus 4 is 8. 28. Yes. Um, plus, he is now bleeding at the beginning of his next turn. All right, anything else? Yes. Sun Dragon is going to move up and around. He's actually going to go after the zombie because he's trying to get into flanking position. Oh, wait, no. First, his direwolves are going to go. So, Direwolf is going to attack the zombie on the right in front of Sun Dragon. And miss somehow. And the other one will attack the halberdier in front of him. And miss. So now Ivar is going to attack. Und zombie. And then with this extra attack. move around and he will bop with advantage skeleton halberd ears Gonna go after those dire wolves. One of the dire wolves lets out a long, mournful howl and fades away into particles of light. And the other one will attack Hakan. And fail miserably. Other halberdier is now going to attack Ivar. Oof. Zombie is going to stand up and attack the direwolf and miss. Atlas. I will, from the safety of hiding the, behind Tish, uh, attack with my delay again. Here, you will protect me, I will poke with stick. Yes. Uh... You will miss. Ugh. You will hit. Nice. 
Uh, okay, damage. And then... Polar Master. Oof, bad. Alas. But he, he is, once again, inflicted with Unwavering. Alrighty. Shauron is going to take a shot at the Bone Guard Swordsman. And the uh, mirrored shot is going to go on to the Skeleton Halberdier. And he's going to take his second shot at the other Halberdier. There's no other enemies within five feet, so that does not activate Horde Breaker. Tish. Tish will uh, continue to batter this swordsman. So first attack at advantage. Oh, terrible. So, another one at advantage. Hits. I can re-roll one of those. Yep, re-roll that one. <laughs> nope, it's the same. <laughs> Okay, and then he will uh, actually just action surge, because why not? Uh, attack. Ooh, much better. Roll okay. Roll me a d20, tell me what it is. It is 14. Rocked and rolled. Roll damage dice twice, add them together, push the creature 15 feet away, and knock them prone. And you can re-roll those ones. Yes. Uh, wait, how many ones did I roll? Two. Two, okay, so... So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, plus 4, plus 1, so 19, and then roll me 46, plus 4, plus 1. Because it's damaged dice twice. And re-roll that too. Yep, Oof. he's dead. Very nice. Um, and, uh... Yeah. That's, uh, that's good on our end here. All right, the archer is going to fire a shot at Ivar. And miss. Hawken. Everything around you is dead.
Um, it looks like it. I mean, oh wait, I... no, 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 this this archer is alive still. Yeah, those two and the archer. those hit all of that hits He's still alive, if only barely. Or still unalive, or whatever the hell you want to say. <sighs> yeah. Like I said, I'm thinking about going back to Roll20 in the future. That's a hit. Roll damage. Callie. Just the zombie and the archer left. Eat them. Bring us victory. Oh. You you do not eat. You do claw. Ivar is gonna... Come up here. This dire wolf is going to attack that last zombie. Ba -da 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 -da. Yay! Congratulations. We've done it. Let's go. <laughs> Great victory. Uh, and unfortunately, as is common these days, that is where we're going to have to call it because it's all about the RPing, about whether we kill the crypta and the bandits and yada yada yada. So we have to stop there because nobody else is. Yes, here. true.
Uh, you knew anything. 17,586. 17,586, yeah. There must be an echo in here. <laughs> well, I mean, there is. There's Tish and his... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. All right, um, so I will wish you guys good night, and uh, we're going to wrap it up there because, of course, it's got to be RP stuff. Um, if you guys want to, try and encourage the other Sunday people, uh, like give them a briefing in the Sunday party chat and then use like one of the IC channels to um, like RP out what would happen afterwards um, so that next session you'd just be able to move on to the next thing. Or you can wait to role play next session with everybody's characters here and whatever i i don't care you guys can do whatever you prefer as your group um but those those options are both available to you um so i will say have a good night unless you have any immediate questions comments or concerns i do not good night fare thee well then i must go make food All right, and that is where we're going to call it a night for tonight. Um, you know, I was hoping to do more. We've only been playing for like an hour and a half, but only two out of four of my players are here. So, you know, can't be making decisions for the party. We've got to wait for the rest of the party to show up. So, uh, again, thank you for coming. Have a good night. See you hopefully in two weeks. Thank <laughs> you.